Sarkos Campbell. Sarko International PLC was a security system company incorporated in the Republic of Ireland with operational headquarters in Princeton, New Jersey, United States. Sarko International was composed of two major business segments, security solutions and fire protection. What happened? In 2002, a multi-billion corporation, Tyco, suffered a tremendous blow to its public image when its top executors were accused of multiple felonies. Under the charismatic leadership of its chief executive officer, Denis Kozlovsky, the company flourished and became one of the most successful enterprises, with a total revenue of $22 billion in 1999. The situation changed with launching a full-scale investigations of the company's financial statements. It revealed numerous cases of funds misappropriation, stealing, document falsification, and a tax evasion by Kozlovsky, who used Tyco money to enjoy his life in luxury. Along with the company's chief financial officer, Mark Swartz, Kozlovsky was accused of manipulating uh, with the company's stock prices for the purpose of profit making. Both executors risked their, their reputation and prison sentence by making a fortune. The discovery of these multiple felonies resulted in the eruption of tremendous scandal that damaged the reputation of Tyco and threatened the financial security of its employees, shareholders, and the retirees. Who got hurt? Uh, indeed, the Tyco employees, shareholders, and retirees were the primary victims of the scandal. A series of sensational discoveries about the accounting machinations of Tyco executors led to the fall of the company's stock prices. For instance, a former board member, Frank Walsh, was accused of receiving $20 million commission for, re for securing the SIT merger, pleaded guilty in the court, and repaid $22 million in the court fines. Jerry Box, the president of Tyco Fire and Security Division, was accused and fired for the machinations with bookkeeping records. These events had a tremendous impact on the economical stability of the corporation. As the prices of Tyco's uh, shares rapidly decreased from $60 per share in January 2002 to $18 per share in December 2002, investors lost a million of dollars. Who benefited? Executors and both board members were the only ones who benefited from the decentralization of the management system allowing corruption and illegal dealings. Thus, Kozlovsky effectively used the decentralized corporate structure of Tyco to amass a tremendous fortune and enjoy uh, the life in luxury, while the other a few board members actually knew about the company's activities the corporation consisted of four distinct divisions with a little interaction between them. The presidents of each division reported directly to Kozlowski. In such work environment, the chief CEO illegally appropriated Tyco's funds to pay the acquisition of real estate, to purchase an art of work and financing of party for his wife. Kozlowski used the, um, the stolen money to buy a $7, $7 million worth apartment for his former wife to settle a divorce claim and pay $29 million for a vacation home. Scandal Resolution The Tyco scandal led the imprisonment of guilty company executors and the partial recovery of Tyco's stolen money. On September 12, 2002, Kozlowski was indicted and charged with stealing $600 million from Tyco. The same day, Swartz was indicted and accused of stealing $170 million from the corporation. Both executors were charged with earnings of $430 million by selling the company's uh, stocks at the artificially inflated prices. In 2005, both men were found guilty on 22 of 23 courts of larceny conspiracy and falsification of business records the violation of business law and were ordered to pay $134 million of compensation to Tyco H. Kozlowski was also paid $70 million in fine, whereas Swartz paid $35 million. Both executors were sentenced to seven years of imprisonment. Ethical Framework This case of Tyco scandal may serve 
as a suitable exemplification of Kantian deontological ethics and concept of categorical imperative in particular. Uh, Kant claims that moral rules are categorical because they should be enforced and followed regardless of human desires and strivings. Categorical imperative refer to the necessity to act only according to the maxim by which you can at the same time a will um, that it should become a universal law. Tycho scandal strongly suggest that honesty and hard work are the categorical imperative because they ensure the economic stability and financial security of its employees. Such approach would allow avoiding ethical failures in corporations in the future. 